how do we get to a point where Clay is now looking like the most responsible man on the show and the most reasonable guy literally on the show welcome guys once again to another episode of love is blind season six and today we're going to be talking about the two new episodes that came out that is episode 10 and episode 11. firstly let's talk about what happened in episode 10. this episode we got to see clay and aid meeting with aid's mom now this that was like a very eye-opening conversation i did love the conversation i did love that they met each other's parents and i loved how the parents i did love how the parents talked now firstly i want to talk about Eddie's mom what she said when she and clay and Eddie and clay met with her you know yes she, she she knew she saw it that clay has this problem of business business is too business in he's always you know his schedule his schedule is very tight and so therefore there's no much time for him and ad to connect him and ad to be in you know uh, she wants so much time but she cannot get it because of his work and he's like i want to work because i want to provide for you that life i do understand two of their points of view but I still understand there should be a point where they say to themselves, at least, like Eddie's mom said. Not like Eddie's mom said, like um, Clay's mom says. There's a place you need to give yourself grace. Say, okay, this person I do love. I love so much. And I need to create time for the person. And that's why I say, I did, I did love what Eddie's mom and Clay's mom, the conversations they had with them. You know, yes, you want to provide. Yes, you want to be an entrepreneur and a great entrepreneur at that. Nobody wants to marry a lazy person. I would not love that for AD because AD is one of my favorite person on the show. So I would literally not love that for her that she's a lazy person. So I love that for Clay that he's a very driven work. He, he wants to work. He wants to take care of her. Those kind of things. So. I love that, but like his mom said, there needs to be a point where you say, I need to do this. Literally, I need to create time for us because if we don't have those times to have a special moment between us, what at times we look back and say, these were the most important times in our marriage. And those things do cause drifts in relationships. You know, it creates a lot of rifts in relationships. And, and, and when I'm talking about a relationship, I say, I'm talking about fiancés going into marriage. So I love that the two of them were like trying to tell them, get, have grace for yourself and try to understand each other. I'm going to give a very big kudos to Eddie's mom. The way she spoke, she's not going to tell me she's not a counselor because she spoke words. She addressed Eddie's, um, is um pain at this point of view and also addressed clay's point of view and made them understand that they need to make meet themselves at the middle she never blamed every any of them for this is because of you that's why it's not working it's because of you that's why you're not working no i love i love i loved Adi's mom she's one of my favorite moms that i saw on the episode of love is blind Eddie's mom, she did it for me. I love the child. She wasn't trying to make you feel like, oh, you are this, you're bad, you're not trying enough. Like she said, marriage is hard alone. And she I love the way she addressed Clay, saying that you should not take your parents' issues. Yes, we parents, parents, they've effed up, they've done their own shit. That's their life. This is your life. Don't take up whatever thing you did see in your parents' life. 24 years, like um, Clay said, his parents lasted 24 years. 24 years is not easy. Some people nowadays on the streets don't even last three years. One year, what am I saying three years? One year. Some people don't even last a year in a relationship. And they are broken up. And they are divorced. So if they can love themselves and say we can be together for 24 years 24 they did it was a good run it's not so much a lot of us can boast about it nowadays that we have a 24 year run relationship 
so many of us can post about it a lot of us can post about it so i'm happy that she made has he made clear understand that yes your your parents divorce might be traumatic to you but remember the times remember that they spent 24 years together and don't use that experience to to to, to map your own life that it felt like she was also talking to me because I think I, I got I, I learned in one one or two things from what she said to A B and Clay. Now we'll move on to Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy and Chelsea. I always love whenever I see Jimmy and Chelsea. So Jimmy and Chelsea meeting up with um Jimmy's parents. Like it was nice. I love Jimmy's parent. Oh, Jimmy's parent is another parent that I love. And I love the way the father was like, when, when before we wanted to get married, we wrote things that we didn't like about ourselves. So I love Jimmy's parent. Am I the only one that whenever I see Jimmy and Sarah, so why do I keep on calling her Sarah? Am I the only one that whenever I see Jimmy and Chelsea, I always feel like they always want to try to sell their relationship over perfect? Because... The way she was defining the way, I know, yes, they have a kind of good relationship, but the way she was defining the relationship when she was in the front of Jimmy's parents, I was like, um, it's not as that perfect like you're preaching about it. But I feel like she was trying to make a good impression with Jimmy's parents. And the way she was like, <laughs> sometimes just to her, you be like, um, you know, with everything that is going on, I'm like, no, calm down, <laughs> like calm down, like calm down, really, really do calm down. And we no having no the the, the, the child's appearance was good, and the way they had the relationship, I'm like it was like I'm so in love with her. Sometimes I don't be, be believing Jimmy when he says he's so in love with her because even me, I'm not even convinced in the love he has for her. I believe Clay's love in AD, then I believe Jimmy's love in Chelsea. That's just the truth. The way I believe Clay's love in AD than Jimmy's love to Chelsea. I just feel like he just trying to you know when I tell myself a lot, I would believe in myself. That's like that's the impression it gives me that if I tell myself enough, I would believe in myself. That is how I do say it. Then do you have this first conversation with the parents? You know, everybody's like, okay, that's nice, they're good for each other. Then later on. They are having a chat, like, oh, how was my you meeting my parents? You know, I've never is this like a big thing meeting parents and whatnot. And all of a sudden, she's bringing up the topic that he went out last night to go meet up with his friends, and she doesn't like that. I first I was like, is it that she didn't like his group of friends? Because I would understand if she didn't like the kind of group of friends he went to meet. That's a different thing. But she said she is not someone that goes out, so he should also be somebody that doesn't go back, don't go out. I'm like. Um, that doesn't sit well with me because if there's one thing I know about relationship is compromise. If I am an introvert and you are an extrovert and we're dating, doesn't mean you have to force me to become an extro introvert or I have to force the person to be an extrovert. It's not possible. You, the only thing you guys have to do is that you have to come to a common ground. If you normally used to go out every single day, you know that just because I'm a person that doesn't go out every day, we have to re you have to reduce your going out because yes, you have to spend time with me. So if it's like seven days in a week you go out, you might cut it down to three, three times in a week to go out and meet your friends. But she's saying that she doesn't want to be with somebody that goes out just because she's not the outgoing kind of person. It's not possible. You met him as a person that is outgoing. You met as someone that likes chilling with his friends. You outrightly telling him that he should not go out again to meet his friends. He should never go out. That all your life will be when you go to work, you come back, you stay together. I understand spending time together, but saying he should not go out and meet his friends bar again. You shouldn't go out and have a drink bar again. That besides me. It's a different thing if she complains about the kind of friends. Because that's a different thing. Because I, I will see everything with that. Sometimes you might have issues with the kind of friends your guy is dating or your woman is dating. But you saying outrightly, don't go out because I'm not an ongoing person. That is you want to use your own to destroy my own. You're trying to force a personality of yours on me. And that is not fair on anybody. 
it's not fair. The only thing we should do is come to a common ground and say, this is the thing we can do. This is where we can be at. We should understand that. That is what I feel. That is what I feel. Then the, the, the in argument started escalating because he wasn't understanding. Because I would not understand. He wasn't understanding the fact of don't go out to see your friends. And it was like just for in an hour, 30 minutes. And he has been cooked up with cooked up with her, cooked up with her in that house for how many weeks? He hasn't gone out to meet his friends. The one time he says go out and meet his friends, it became something. Then should I bring it up? Oh, I don't like you hanging out with your girlfriend. And he was like, You never voiced it out to me before. And that that part I do agree with Jimmy. For the first time, I felt offended that Chelsea was allowing me to agree with Jimmy. Chelsea gave me the opportunity to agree with Jimmy. I have never done that since I started watching this season. But the first time I agreed with Jimmy, and that is Chelsea's fault. Because you have never brought it up to the table like, I don't want you hanging out with your female friends. Then all of a sudden, you're in an argument. You're like, oh, why did you go and hang out? Or we'll say, why are you hanging out with your female friends? Have you brought that out before? Have you told him, Jimmy, I don't like you hanging out with your female friends? Then he goes and does it. That's, that's when I'll be like, yes. You have already had a chat about it. And I was like, we never had a chat about that. Jimmy was funny in that part. He was like, we never had a chat about that. And she was like, okay, okay, what do you want? She said, she said I don't want you to hang out. She, and I want you to pull back. He was like, if you tell me to pull back, I would. And she was like, yes, pull back. And he was like, no, I don't want to do that this time. I'm like, why did you let tell her that if she wants you to pull back, you will pull back? But I felt like that at that point when they were in a heated argument was not the right point for her to have brought up the fact that she was not okay with him hanging out with his female friends. I understood that it's from a, 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 you are trying to be safe with your partner and you know that they had history, they've had, they've slept together one time and you know, it could happen. One time, it could happen a second time. What's stopping that from happening? So I understood where she was coming from, but she should have you know, handle it in a better way, in a better circumstances, not when they were already arguing. When I thought that it was not going to get worse, when I thought it wasn't going to get worse, she was like, oh, okay, who were you with last night? She first went from not hanging with friends to you were hanging out with female friends to, oh, I knew you were hanging out with Jessica. That was just like, no, Chelsea, you were insecure. You were so insecure, and I agree with Jimmy. Oh, I was so pissing me off that I have to be so much lean, so so much agreeing with Jimmy. That she was fishing. She she's like she's throwing a lot of things so that he will see the one she will see the one that he fell with. Because when you tried four friends, you tried girlfriends. Now it's uh, you had, you had with Jessica. I'm like, why are you so insecure about Jessica? Jessica did not do anything to you. Why? Why are you so insecure about Jessica? Please make it make sense. Because at this stage, it's not making sense to me. The way she's so insecure about Jessica. Jessica hasn't done anything to her. And she's like, we're sleeping. Oh my God, that moment I like, I think I even paused. I just paused for a minute and I was like, I need a break. Because why did you have to bring Jessica's name up? Why did you have to talk about Jessica? And from nowhere it entered, I, I, I feel like you don't love me. I don't think you love me. I'm like, no. She went from worse, it's like slowly, I started like going worse and worse. It says in English, like worse, it went there. It went there so bad. Because how do you go from I don't feel secure in you, I don't trust you, to I don't love you, and I don't think when you say you love me, you do love me? No. I might not be a huge fan of Jimmy. I'm not a huge fan of Jimmy. But I always say Chelsea was wrong in that situation. So, so wrong in that situation. She took it so far. She went so far that she shouldn't have gone. For a simple conversation of... Don't hang out with your friends, which I didn't even see or understood why she would say for him not to hang out with his friends at all. That did not make sense. If you say limit the amount of time you hang out with your friend, that is understandable. But saying never hang out with your friends again, I don't understand that. I don't. 
Now, from they all went from meeting the parents and being lovey dovey to ending the episode in such a bad manner. And this guy ended up saying, I don't love you again. I don't think I want to do this. Not like he, he didn't really say, I don't love you, but he was like, I don't think I want to do this. And you know, I, I used to, I, I think like Chelsea sometimes acts the, somehow like. From some nowhere, she was shouting, she was pissed off, saying, you don't love me, I don't believe you love me. Then when he said what he said, he, then she went into the bedroom and was like, you know, she now said the cute little voice. And I'm like, oh, then he walked out on her. I'm like, you said what you said, and well, I don't understand. Do you think you would just do that and it's, it's wiped up like that? Take accountability of what you say. Be careful of what you say. Be careful of what you say because you might get what you have just been wishing for at the end of the day. That might be episode 11, right? AD and Claire are home planning about the wedding. She's talking about the colors. We couldn't even see him on his laptop, busy about work. But I love that he was still like entering into the conversation with her, still acknowledging that she was in the room. Then she was showing him the color she was trying to bring for her bridesmaids and the rest and all of a sudden this guy was on his phone like yeah this can't be serious about business like and this and he was like oh not again but i i love the way she reacted she didn't go hyper she didn't shout she didn't quarrel she gave him that patience to do what she was he was supposed to do then allow him to come like i think she listened to her mom and also listened to clay's mom that part i did love about ad that's why i say ad is my favorite girl on the show she showed me a lot of things in that episode 11 why she was my favorite guy girl and the other part of the show where I loved it and I and I remembered why it was my favorite girl was in that part where every one of them met up with their past connections they had on the pod. They all came and we were now in the conversation with Sarah Ann and Jeremy. I used to like Jeremy until I realized he's a totally effed up guy. Now, Jeremy came, him and Sarah and according to them, have not seen each other for the past four days. I've not spoken to each other for the past three days. So they, they've not spoken to each other since the argument of the him going to meet with Sarah and speaking to her all three nights. And I would say the way he handled that situation was the most fucked up thing ever. He played it out as if it was nothing that big. Go to somebody you are engaged to be married in few days, and you're going to another woman, and you're staying all through the night. Even if it was so innocent, even if you guys didn't do it, because he kept on hinting at the fact that I didn't do anything. Is that supposed to be a, a consolation for me? It speaks volume. That means you have a connection with this person. For you to sit down all through the night and have a conversation with this person, it's not about you didn't do anything, you didn't cross the, the line. That's what Jeremy does. He still understand to now. It's not about the fact that he didn't cross the line. It's the fact that you have a connection with a whole ass person and you ignored your fiance's feelings. Now they are meeting for the first time in this place. Sarah Ann also showed up. And this is why I say I did love AD because AD called her out on her bull. AD called her out and was like, Baby girl, you sent a DM, DM. I saw the DM. And that DM did not look well because she didn't even give them an opportunity to get to know each other. It didn't give them an opportunity to get to work on their relationship. And for the fact that Sarah Ann was trying to make an excuse for herself, that speaks volume. That to show a lot of things. Like, I don't have with Sarah Ann. I don't have with Jeremy. They are suited for each other. If they are still together till today, they are so suited for each other because if Sarah Ann should sit down there and act like what she did was not wrong and she's like, you know, I just sent a DM because, you know, we had a connection on the pod. He didn't choose you. I don't care what connection you had at the pod. And that is why what Eddie was telling her. He didn't choose you. I feel like you should have respected that path.
what is um this girl in the same position, Jessica? Did she message um Jimmy? No. Respecting that part and being like, I understand that you have a fiance now. Even if it was a game show, it's a fiance that's been a ring. There should be this respect. And you dishonor that. And you know, and the thing that pissed me off was when she cried out to um Jeremy. And Jeremy was like, you know what? You know, I, I don't regret not picking you. And he says that we should feel for him. He he feels that we should feel for him. You absolutely not. I, I don't think he has my heart. I don't think he has my forgiveness. I don't think he has anything for me because. Everything he did in this episode showed me that he's not somebody that should be trustworthy. He's not someone that is concerned for himself. He's selfish because even his own mom, his own mom was done with his foolishness. When he told his mom the, 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 the incident, the mom told him that you are glad it was not me. There is absolutely no woman on this earth. Be it a TLC, be it a girlfriend, whatever situation she, whatever ship that it is. There is no woman that you, you say, oh, this is my woman, especially the one you've given a ring and say, you are my fiance. They will be so glad that you went to another woman, stayed on through the night, had a child with her on through the night, and you're coming home and my uh, condolence would be, oh, we did not cross the line. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you didn't cross the line. I appreciate the fact that you honored me enough not to cross the line. Like, his mom couldn't even take his bull. So if your mom feel, felt like you, you were acting like a bull, why should why did Laura feel or welcome you? And it was like, you're not even allowing me to explain. What explanation? She knows. At this point, I think she was just fighting for herself. She knows that you have a connection with somebody else. She knows that you are regretting picking her. She knows that you love Sarah Ann. So why should she walk up walk up with you? And the fact that he was like, you know, I know we have our differences, but can we try and have a good time with our friends? That's what you care about? That's what she said. Is that what you should care about? We just broke off an engagement, and the only thing you care about is that we should be all cordial and smiling in front of our friends. That means you never even cared about Laura at all. Laura was not cared for. And I love that she told, I love the way she called out Jeremy, like, no, I'm not here for this bull ain't here for this bull in any shape in any form any way i love that she called him out because he was acting high and mighty like he's like go to sarah sarah was there like i'm i'm happy i'm happy to pick you pick me second i'm happy to be picked second i'm happy to be there she's happy to be there so pick her and she's like okay i'll come and take my things that that part uh, f me up she was like i'm i'm coming to come and pick up my things and he was like um yeah you can come and pick it up i'm, I'm already I, he was feeling like oh why do you what do you mean by you're going to come and, come and pick up your things not knowing that this guy has already packed up her things in a place and like yeah, you know what you can just come i've already packed it up so why are you pretending as if you were hot that she said she wanted to pick up her remaining things from your apartment you already packed it up yourself that means your come so come uh um uh, your subconscious doesn't even want her with you and now you are acting, I think somebody was trying to act up for the cameras so that people would be like, oh, Laura was too hard to deal with. No. Yes, at the beginning I felt like so Laura had some kind of attitude. But the day you went and stayed with her and all through the night, that day sealed it for me for Jeremy. And every other thing that has come out, all the gossip that has come out about him, him meeting up with, um, first him meeting up with Sarah Ann, meeting up with Tower Watch Night, then him being all, um, having a whole house fiancé before coming on the show, that he showed me that this guy only cares about himself and himself only. He's selfish, and the selfishness played out in this episode. The way he was trying to gaslight Laura, and he was and, and telling is that I made a I made a wrong decision. Let's go and have fun. Like you never cared about her. You wanted to have Sarah Ann. So why are you pretending like you wanted all you guys to walk? But 
Get off my face, Jeremy. Get off. Get off. Get off. I'm happy that Laura walked off, walked out of him. I, I'm happy that Laura took that decision and walked out of him. Look at Jessica. Jessica did not DM um, Jimmy. They met up there as much as I felt like Jimmy was eating her up and Jimmy was like, oh, Jesus, why? I think at that moment he was thinking, why did I choose Chelsea? Why did I choose Chelsea? Because it was the way he was looking at her, the way he was looking at, like, you could see that there was a connection there. I almost did think that he was going to go tell Chelsea, you know what? This wedding cannot hold. I did think that. I'm not going to lie. I thought that. I thought that. Well, they are still together. They are still going strong for the wedding. And we got to see all the ladies try out their wedding gown. That was so an emotional moment for me because I did love the way, like, everybody, all of them were looking beautiful. I loved, I loved AD's second dress. It was like, that was AD looking sexy, beautiful, you know, elegant. I loved the AD's second dress. I also loved, um, um, Chelsea, officially the only three couples we have now is Chelsea, AD, and God, I don't really always know her name, Johnny's fiance, because they're so lovey-dovey, we don't really talk about them, but they were the only ones that was remaining for the marriage, and I can't wait to see at the end of the day, whether we get to see the three of them walking down the aisle, I would like to see people that will have cold feet for the wedding. I'm going to put a prediction that I feel like Clay might have cold feet. But talking about Clay, guys, did you see Clay's friends? Oh, oh, I thought Clay was fine, but his friends were fine, fine. <laughs> they were fine, fine. Like those men, no, those men, Clay's friends, mm. Sweet chocolate, chocolate, sweet chocolate that I literally enjoy. Like, I enjoyed watching them on my screen. Like, I kept on like looking at them, like, huh? I, I, I didn't end up seeing Clay when he was trying to suit. All I was seeing were just two, just two, two fine specimen of men, like the way they were the ones I was looking at. But we'll get to see them next week. They didn't really give us a real good trailer about what next week was going to be about. But I think like that's going to put us on suspense. But next week we'll be seeing the wedding. We're going to be finding out who finally made it to the wedding. And those that finally said yes or those that had put feet and said no. I hope that none of them said no. I hope that all of them did go through with their wedding. And I want to find out how it went. And I also want to find out the reunion to see it's gonna play out well guys thank you very much for watching my video thank you very much don't forget to like this video so that youtube will recommend to others don't forget to comment your comments on the comment section what you feel about what you said on this video comment it on the comment section and also don't forget to click on the section button down below to subscribe i will see you guys on another video